everyone, and welcome to another episode of WCG Close Up. This is episode 13. Today's topic is something that is becoming more and more relevant, I feel, every single day. Um, because we are looking like we're getting to the end of COVID-19's influence on esports with vaccines coming out across the world. So what I want to talk about today is the strengths of offline esports versus online esports. When you hear me say offline esports, you might wonder what that means uh, because esports is historically done over either a LAN connection or an internet connection, right? And everyone plays esports online, the, ga the esports games, you know, at home, the games you play at home, you play online. Offline esports means a tournament, an event that takes place in a venue where all players are located at the venue. No one is playing from home. No one is playing from a hotel. Everyone is playing on a stage, usually in front of a crowd, but not necessarily. And usually the commentators are on site. Production is on site. Everything is localized in one space where everyone is locally next to each other. And that's what we call offline esports or a LAN. Um, the term comes from everybody connecting their computers via LAN cables and playing offline in that way. Online esports is often where you have production being run remotely and players are entering a lobby of the game in question and then playing from either their home or a practice facility or a team house or a hotel and connecting, uh, you know, from virtually anywhere. So esports, in its explosion of growth that happened in the early 2010s, happened almost entirely online outside of Korea because esports was new in the West. There wasn't a lot of infrastructure for venues to be to be built and put together. Um, there wasn't a ton of interest outside of some early MLGs and WCGs, for example, uh, in running events offline because there wasn't it wasn't that big yet, and streaming hadn't really taken off. Now into the 2010s. Streaming explodes. Everybody has better computers than they've ever had before. Everybody has powerful enough computers to stream their own games. And suddenly you have this explosion of streamers. And then also esports events where a tournament organizer like myself could actually invite people to an online lobby from my house, show them on the screen, and create a tournament that way. And so online tournaments became very popular during this time. In Korea, during this time, everything was run offline and online esports was not really very popular in Korea. And most people didn't actually get modern, you know, computers that could run their own streams and stuff until many years later. So time passed, and then let's go back into talking about kind of offline esports. Time passed and the West really caught up with Korea. You started to see huge events happen in the West. Uh, tournaments like IPL, NASL were popping up in StarCraft II. MLG was already a, an existing tournament organizer, but they started making big StarCraft II events. League of Legends came onto the scene, and then Riot made the LCS and the LCS EU circuits, where fans could actually come offline and watch these players play in regular tournaments. The players were actually coming to a studio, relocating team houses to these locations, and then coming in to, to studios to work offline. This is how Korea has been doing it since the early 2000s, but it was new for the West, right? And so as a result, the quality of production came went up. So you had better cameras, you had the ability to, um, you know, have a live audience next to the players where then you could have fan signings afterwards, for example. Um, and it was way better than you could ever imagine from what we saw in the past with somebody in their bedroom like me casting uh, two StarCraft players that are joining a lobby online. And the prize pools grew as well, and offline esports became, as it was in Korea for, for you know, many a decade, popular in the West. Um, and, you know, for a very long time, that was the standard. And online esports was just for, like, a new scene where there wasn't money yet, or, you know, somebody wants to run an amateur tournament or you want to have fun, or maybe, you know, your academy teams are playing in some sort of online circuit, or, you know... Like I've recommended in previous videos, Caster wants to cast some online games because he doesn't have access to the pros, but he wants to run some small events so he can get casting experience. And that was the progression. And it looked like online esports, you know, in terms of tier one esports and top tier esports was a thing of the past because we moved into a new era where you had LCS, you had Overwatch League, um, and PUBG stadiums were being built, right? in the United States, and it felt like that was the end. 
of online esports. And nobody wanted to look back to online esports because nobody wanted to have old webcams. Nobody wanted to have all the, the lag issues that come with that. Um, the inability to troubleshoot. If you're running a tier one esport, you want to have ultimate control. You want to have the best production possible. You want to have fans. Now we're starting to get a little bit redundant here, but you guys are probably know where I'm leading towards with this. Because in late 2019, early 2020, COVID-19 struck. And that's when the return to online esports actually happened. So Riot in both Korea, actually EU and in North America, ran their league um, for the most part online, actually. And I was pretty shocked to see it happen in Korea because I thought in no world would the LCK be played online. I was watching very closely because I thought, well, I think what Riot Korea will do is that they'll try to weed it out and they'll try to postpone because nobody wants this event to be done online. It's like in, in Korea, again, since the early 2000s, online esports are not a thing. So much so that if you ask a Korean player to play in an online tournament, he, the, the first question he would ask, you know, in some of the, the you know, late 2010s would be, won't everybody cheat? <laughs> um, I remember talking to StarCraft 2 players about this when a lot of online tournaments were being run outside of the GSL, and everyone would just go, I think people cheat in those, don't they? <laughs> um, don't people just watch the stream? And, you know, in Korea, I think that kind of thing is quite rare, but at the end of the day, the LCK, while running this online, ran it from team facilities. So every team was able to play from their facility in the same city. So the lag, even though it's online, was virtually non-existent because everyone's playing from Seoul or the greater Seoul metro area. And not only do you have coaching staff and everybody in the in the, the team house already and everybody's already centrally localized, but Riot Korea also sent referees to the house. And if you go back and watch some of the 2020 and uh, 2021 early spring season before we moved back to offline, if you go back and watch some of those VODs, you can see referees actually specifically pacing around the house, making sure that everything was, was run according to the rules. Additionally, when there were tech issues, those same referees also either themselves or had tech people with them were able to help sort those tech issues out on site at those players' houses. Um, now, that, that was, I think, the best run online tournament experience I've ever seen in, in, in COVID. I think LCK crushed it. They nailed it. On the other side of the ocean, um, from my personal experience, we also did the Overwatch League online in 2020. And nobody was ready for that. Everybody was extremely focused on Overwatch League launching into a homestand model where everyone was going to be traveling. And at that exact moment where everything was starting to get off the ground, uh, suddenly LA shut down almost everything. And so it was very difficult to even try to operate with a bubble of having players play offline. So the solution was running the league online. But unfortunately, not all players lived in team houses at that time because everyone was preparing to travel. So you, there was no requirement that you would have to live in a facility. A lot of players were playing from home with bad internet. They were playing from a home that they expected to travel from and then return to in between games, but not actually play a tournament for. And the United States is much larger than Korea. There's so there's so there's so many different types of internet speeds you're going to get. There's so many ways the internet connects to the U.S. that's going to create lag. And if you live in the U.S. and you're watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so there were a lot of issues making sure latency was proper. So a lot of players had to relocate to better locations to make sure they could play better. Setting up cameras for the players was also a requirement but a lot of players just outright turned the cameras off or, uh, you know, turned them away, didn't get a great shot, or just straight up refused to use them because it was too annoying for them and too frustrating to make sure that that was matched. And there wasn't really anyone on call and set up to make sure those cameras were working. So what you ended up with, if you go back and watch a lot of Overwatch League VODs, is sometimes they'll do a shot where it's six players versus six players lead up into going into the map. And literally two of the 12 cameras were on and the rest of them were just all black squares or just like a, a Shanghai Dragons logo or something instead because the players' cameras just simply weren't on. And then you also had around this time outside of Overwatch, uh, and you know, LCS was being run online with fewer problems, but still a lot of problems. Um, the LEC was able to operate with a studio for their casters. The players were still playing online. Um, in the CSGO community during this time, 
there was a lot of cheating scandals. There were a lot of cheating scandals. There were a lot of allegations about people misusing the fact that this is being played online to abuse things. And I'm not going to get deep into that because I'm not a CSGO expert and I don't know all the details on, on what happened there. But I saw it, it felt like almost every week during the pandemic, the, the peak of the pandemic when CSGO leagues were being played online, that coaches were basically abusing these, the fact that no one could see that they were there. They were helping players when they wouldn't, when they're not supposed to be. Um, some potential aim hacks happening um, and stuff like that were, were occurring. And allegedly, anyways, this is where the story goes. But the fact that all this drama occurs is further proof that in terms of online esports, people can cheat, people will cheat, and rules can be abused if you don't have a referee on site. And if you don't have your league contained within one small country like we have here in Korea, it's very difficult to fly referees to someone's team house or someone's personal home and say, yeah, I'm going to watch you make sure you don't do anything against the rules. It's just not logistically feasible. I don't want to say we need to delete online esports results, but I think that people should look at results and the gravity of some of the events that have happened in, in a lot of tier one or two or tier two esports during the COVID era with a little bit of an asterisk. And you'll see this a lot when you look through like Liquipedia or whatever wiki you use for esports, where you'll see like an asterisk that says these matches were played online due to COVID-19, stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff that that has happened during the pandemic where tournaments weren't run correctly or they were run last minute. There were a lot of problems and sometimes some rules had to be bent and sometimes things didn't go according to plan. Sometimes entire tournament formats were changed and it didn't really make sense. Sometimes teams moved regions, you know, uh, in certain esports to actually accommodate for this sort of thing. I think it's a really big lesson in that we've moved to a stage of esports where offline esports is it and it is it is by far superior we've seen all the problems that online esports have in a modern era because in the past we just accepted these things before it grew to be as big as it is there were only a few live events everything else was online and everyone else thought everyone just kind of thought back then it was okay but now that we've gone to offline going back to online Everyone was saying, this is the, the greatest thing for esports. Esports is so good because we can do everything online. The rest of the sports leagues are all shutting down. And it makes me wonder if in the future, maybe esports should shut down temporarily and, and instead of running online in order to accommodate the best uh, possible setup for players, for fans. And if that means the players need to go play in an offline event with a bubble, as we've seen a lot of esports do throughout the years, I think that's a way better solution than playing online the lag issues that persist with the cheating issue issues that persist and i i personally propose that in the future if something like this does happen again covid's not over but we're getting there if something like this happens again the tournament should be delayed or postponed until a proper solution can be found instead of trying to match deadlines and decreasing the quality of tournaments overall esports and the integrity that comes with big stages big fans the legacy that Tier one esports carry, and so, for some esports have carried for uh, you know a decade or so, and some even that are fairly new, four or five years, deserves the respect of a proper tournament. And when your league brand is on an online tournament, it has to be run at the best level, it has to run at the highest possible level, with no asterisks, with no technical problems, because it's important for people to remember years of history. And from 2020 to 2022, these years of history. I think, and we're not in 2022 yet, but I think we'll probably have that will carry on for about another year of asterisks that didn't necessarily have to happen had things been delayed, had things been postponed, had things been run differently. And I, I beseech you, tournament organizers, in the future, try to get the best integrity possible for your events because we've gone offline. The fans deserve the best possible quality. We don't have to go back. Let's go forward together. The best esports possible. Offline, if possible. If not possible, delay or make the best integrity happen. It's on you. It's some. It's been something I've been thinking about a lot. And I do really think that it's something that people should be thinking about and talking about. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of WCG Close-Up.